Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm having a wonderful day, and as I say often, this is the day, and I say it often because it's true, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, I'm excited about the, all of the wonderful things that are going on, and you know here at the upper room, we really get all fired up and excited about, here's that word, here it comes. Are you braced? Are you sitting? Are you leaning on something? There's a word coming. Oh my, so many are bent, twisting themselves into pretzels to avoid using it, but not here at the upper room, not with Bishop Wooden, and hopefully, my friends, I'm confident not with you. I enjoy celebrating Christmas. This is the Christmas season. This is the time of the year where we recognize and celebrate the only federal holiday in the month of December. The only legal recognized by the government federal holiday in the month of December is Christmas. Now, we've added other uh, holidays and other times uh, to this time of the year, but I want to talk to you about Christmas. But before I talk to you about Christmas, I want to give you an assignment. I want to say something to you, and I want you to check it out. And after you check it out, just just shoot me a text or put a, 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 a make a comment. See if you've noticed the same things. Now, here, here is what I want you to think about. Pretend that you, next week or tomorrow, or for the rest of the day, or tomorrow, or whatever, that you were from another galaxy, that you were from another planet, that you came to uh, the, the Earth, you came to America, and you came to America during the this time of the year okay now and you're not familiar with any of our customs but you understand english you understand commercials you know how to watch television you have assimilated uh, quite well into uh the american culture and landscape so you begin to, to turn on the television as americans do and watch whatever your favorite sporting show is or whatever show on television, whatever you're watching it, you're behaving like an American. And then you go to commercial. Commercial after commercial, after commercial, after commercial, after commercial. Based on the commercials that you watch, would you know that this time of the year, is actually Christmas? Would you have any idea um, what we're celebrating? And I'm talking about Christmas being the birth of Christ, Christmas, Christ gatherings. Even with what they've done to that great man of God who actually lived who was a born-again Christian, who loved Jesus Christ, who was a saint of God indeed. You know, you call him Saint Nick, Saint Nicholas, a, a Christian who loved Jesus. We, 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 we've taken even his life. I think, Brother Gary, he would be angry with what uh, has been done with him during this time of the year, and I talk about it, my friend. Why, why do you talk about this every year, a uh, uh, preacher? Why? Uh, well, I talk about it because I love Jesus. I talk about it because it's only done to on days that are uh, set aside uh, to recognize him. Whether it's Easter, he's paired with a bunny rabbit. Thanksgiving, he's paired with a, a turkey. And at Christmas, it, he's bracketed with Kwanzaa, made up, and Hanukkah, a religion 
that is seldom celebrated even in Israel amongst the Jews. It is one of their lesser celebrations. So we bring up two other celebrations, include them, which we did not always do, during this time of the year. And so the name Christmas is totally missing uh, from most department stores, most places of business. Uh, I'm told that as a b big, beautiful Merry Christmas at, at, at Dillard's, I, 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 good, I'm going there and buy something. Uh, 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 one of the clothing stores where I, I shop, uh, Lyle's men's store, right on the door. Merry Christmas. It's Christmas time. But in most places, Christmas is missing. Now, unless you're watching a um, Balance of Nature commercial, a Hobby Lobby commercial, uh, I think a Capital Chevrolet uh, commercial, most of these businesses will not say Merry Christmas. Uh, none of the car makers say Merry Christmas. Uh, everything is about the season and uh, happy holidays and all of that. All I'm saying to you is just know that this is not, uh, this is not done by mistake. This is done on purpose. And the marketers believe that it is more, it is in their financial interest to leave Christmas out of Christmas than to include Christmas <laughs> at Christmas time. We're living in a messed up world and a messed up uh, country when we are that ashamed of Jesus Christ. And many are attempting to redefine what Christmas is all about. Christmas is not about uh, just giving gifts, being kind to others, flashing a smile, and all the things they're telling you that it's about today. Those things are a part of it. But Christmas is about the birth of Christ. And I pray that every believer who is watching me today will make sure you celebrate Jesus Christ during this time of the year. And when you go home and visit your loved ones and families, and everybody sitting around at the table and you're talking and you're glad to see each other, which you should be. But make sure it's about Christmas that that you mention Jesus Christ. Hey, how about bringing him up? Mention that he's still the king of kings and the Lord of lords and he's coming again. Just wanted to throw that out. If you haven't paid attention, just notice how the marketers, the commercials, the businesses, the corporations, oh my, these people who are gunning for your money, who are counting on you to go in and patronize their business this time of the year, to buy their wares, to buy their products, to, to promote them. Notice that they are finding ways, maybe they're pressured, I don't know, Frankly, I don't care, but they are, I don't care as to their reasons. I don't think there's a reason that can justify it. I do care that they're doing this because for me and people like me, it, it puts a tremendous damper on this time of the year because I, no one has still told me when the, when the salutation and the greeting, Merry Christmas became offensive. It was just one day offensive. I'm offended at Merry Christmas. I Oh, you're offending me when you say Merry Christmas. I don't know why you would be offended if I said to you Merry Christmas on the 4th of July. You might want to correct me and tell me <laughs> that, that uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm early. I'm early. But I don't know why it would be an offense since it is uh, the celebration of the birth of of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And I love him so much, my friends. And I thank God for Jesus. Now, uh, listen, listen. Uh, uh, you know what? What we're seeing here is what Paul talked about in uh, 1 Timothy chapter number 6 and verse 10. For the love of money is the root cause of all evil, not money itself. Uh, some people do like the OJs did back in the day. Uh, they said money, 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 money. No, it's not money. 
The, the evil is the love of money, the insatiable desire for money, the, 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 the drive, the spirit of covetousness, where you just got to have more and more money, not money itself. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19. The Bible teaches that money answereth all things. Much good comes from having money, but we should not have an, an an insatiable desire for money to the point that it drives us to dishonest means of get, getting it, doing what we have to do to get money, destroying people to get money, being selfish, being an embezzler, being a thief, being a liar, overpricing things to get money, selling your soul for money. All these things, uh, because the love of money will destroy you. The, the love of money destroys homes, marriages, families, children, friendships. All kinds of things have been wrecked because of people's insatiable desire for ever more money. And it is, as the Bible says, the root cause of all evil. If you want to find the evil in it, follow the dollars. I was watching, by the way, 30 for 30, the ESPN show that they do uh, on athletes. And they the, the newest one is out on Reggie White, and the name of it is the Minister of Defense. And I watched it because I, I, I remember Reggie White. Uh, he was a tremendous football player. He was a preacher. Uh, he did, by the, uh, b before he died, went in some directions that I did not agree with. Uh, but uh, uh, he was a, a, a Hall of Fame, tremendous football player. But I tell you, Reggie White committed the sin of sins. Reggie White didn't agree with the lifestyle of the uh, homosexual community. And I just thought it, thought it was interesting as I watched the show and I'm watching the credits. And what I was actually trying to see was who was the, 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 the singer behind. Uh, they were singing a beautiful song as it was going off. And uh, uh uh, I wanted to know who the singer was. So I'm watching the credits and the last credit says this to learn more about the NFL's support of the LGBTQIA plus community. Please visit and they tell you where to visit all rights reserve uh, ESPN. So basically, the, the, if you watch it, you will see that it starts out being one thing. And when you see the journalists and the commentators and the people that they bring on, it ends up being just a big plug for a lifestyle that the Bible calls an abomination. Why even bring that up today? I want you to be aware, just as I want you to pay attention to the commercials, pay attention to movies, pay attention to how these people are trying to manipulate your minds, manipulate your heart, manipulate what you think, move you from this grand book right here. And, and watching it, I want to warn you, if you watch it, it is an attack on biblical truth. And uh, Reggie White did uh, go off in, in, in many ways in his teachings. The word of God is right. The Bible is true. And uh, uh, God's word is settled for, in, in heaven forever. And every one of us, whether you are a Hall of Fame football player or uh, just a guy walking the street, every one of us are going to have to come under the authority of God's word if we're going to go to heaven. So my friends, I'm excited. I just want to bring it to you, these things, because I want you, the people who listen to this preacher, I want to encourage you to think. I want to encourage you to pay attention. I want to encourage you to uh, allow the Holy Spirit to operate in you in the spirit of discernment, and the Holy Spirit will bless you, and he will keep you real good. Now, in my closing, before I give the big invite, because I'm excited about service tonight, I said something Sunday that I want to correct. Because <laughs> you know, one of my things is I'll say, I'm right. I'm right. <laughs> well, how about this? I was wrong. 
what? Yes, I was wrong. I said something that uh, I, I wasn't sure of. And when I looked at the scripture, I, I realized, hey, uh, uh, I got that point wrong. And it, it wasn't a major point, but right is right. Wrong is wrong, and I want to correct it. Now, I was talking about Abraham, and I was opining, talking to Dr. Robert Foster, uh, a, a man of God who's in, whose wisdom and intelligence in the scripture I highly respect, and we were talking about whether we knew that God, that Abraham circumcised Isaac, of course. The scriptures uh, doesn't mention that Abraham circumcised any of the children that was born to his second wife, Keturah. Um, but the issue was whether Abraham had circumcised Ishmael because when Ishmael was living and was alive, was born, when God gave Abraham the uh, ministry of circumcision and uh, I said that God, uh, that Abraham had not circumcised Ishmael, Ishmael. Yes, he had. The Bible says here in Genesis chapter number 17 and verse 25. And Ishmael, his son, was 13 um, uh, years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Right here in the Bible. Genesis chapter 17 and verse 25. But when God gave him uh, the, uh, the, uh, the circumcision, you know, he told, uh, told them in Genesis chapter 17 and verse 12, and he that is eight days old shall be circumcised. But Ishmael was already 13, so uh, it, it became retroactive. He went back. And got him also. So I just wanted to mention that because uh, scriptural purity and biblical correctness and saying things according to the scripture is very, very, very important to me and is very important to you. And uh, I know that uh, uh, someone may say, well, that's, that's, that's a minor miss. Well, um, I wanted to correct it. And so, uh, and I'm going to mention this tonight also in the service. So I thank God for you. And, uh, and we're going to continue to walk in the scriptures. Now, listen, my friends, continue to pray for Israel. The, the war is continuing. And the things that we were concerned about, concerned would happen, are happening. And, uh, and, 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 and our concern about the media and the way they would cover this war uh, is, is, is coming to pass. War is ugly. This is why what was done on October, I think it was, was the 7th, the 9th, when, uh, when uh, Hamas attacked Israel, and Israel's response was, we're going to destroy Hamas. Well, as the war continues, and it's just horrifying to see what is taking place in Gaza, um, to see buildings destroyed, communities destroyed, oh, the loss of life, uh, even the loss of Gazan lives is a painful thing to see. Uh, the loss of Israeli soldiers is a painful thing to see. Uh, to, to see. War is ugly. It's, war is something. Uh, now, I don't agree with Edmund Starr. Edmund Starr said, war, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Well, the Bible says that there's a time for peace and there's a time for war. And right now, Israel is at war, not with the Palestinian people, not with the Gazan uh, people, but with Hamas. And Israel is determined to destroy Hamas. And uh, Israel knew the Israeli defense, uh, uh, they knew that uh, in coming after Hamas, because Hamas hides among civilians, that civilian, civilian casualties could possibly uh, be high. And Hamas wants to use these civilian casu casualties people who should not be getting killed, but it's Hamas who is hiding amongst the civilians. 
use the, the civilian deaths and use their allies who they can count on, the U.S. media, to affect the opinions of the world and turn the world against Israel. And when I speak on Israel, I'm not speaking because I believe that Israel is perfect and the Jews are perfect. No people are perfect. I'm certainly not perfect. You're not perfect. I don't think Israel is always right. But what I do know is the promise that God has made. God gave them that land. And during this time, when everyone else is piling on, because God knows there's enough media outlets, there's enough uh, uh, students on colleges, there's enough students, there's enough uh, people at universities, and, and even these Ivy League schools, where these, the, the best of the best, and I'm running long, I'm running long, but I'm, 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 I'm going to cut this off, but God knows there's enough people on the other side to speak against Israel. Well, my friends, my reasons for standing with Israel are things that I've found in the pages of this book. And every time I look at it, it reads the same way. And if God hadn't changed his mind and God's word haven't changed, then I'm not changing either. I am praying for the peace of Jerusalem. I believe the promise of God, what God said, they will prosper that love thee. I believe that the promise that God gave to Abraham, I would bless him that blessed thee, curse them that cursed thee, and in thee shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. I believe what Zechariah said, that the people of Israel will mourn. The day will come when they will mourn for the ones that they have pierced. I believe what Paul said in the New Testament, that uh, uh, we are the branches, but Israel is the root. But remember that the root bears the branch, but the branch doesn't bear thee. And I believe that while this Gentile age is coming to an end, it is in our best interest and we are obeying God as we stand and pray that God will use Israel, that God will protect Israel. But I agree with the Apostle Paul also, where he said in Romans chapter number 10, verse 1, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Paul said in Romans chapter number 11, darkness hath in part happened to Israel. Oh, then there's going to be one day a spiritual revival over there. But I'm saying to you, let's pray for all people. And God knows we need to pray for the good old U.S. of A. We need to pray for our streets and our cities. We need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray that revival break out. We need to pray that preachers preach the word of God. We need to pray that people are pointed to Jesus Christ. We need to pray that churches study the Bible and preachers preach the Bible as never before and that God would send revival. And while praying, we need to always remember that, that Daniel said that that is determined must be done. We're living in the last days. Jesus Christ is soon to come. So we better pray to be ready. But these are the reasons, my friends, why Brother Wooden stands by and is praying for the nation of Israel. So my time is up. I've run long today. Please forgive me for this lengthy, lengthy, lengthy uh, presentation. But pay attention to those commercials. See if they are saying Merry Christmas. See if they even mention Christmas. Keep a note of how many do and a, and a huge number of those who do not. Why are you doing that? I want to invite you to join me right here tonight. Praise God at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> That's right. Bible study. We're going to study the word of the Lord together. And uh, I just want to close this by saying to you simply, <laughs> Merry Christmas. I'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ.